Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. We're going to be trying something a little bit different today. I know that this channel can get very technical, I can throw a lot of terms out that just kind of come naturally to me, but obviously everyone's at different levels of their kind of quidge understanding of the quidge education. So we want to make these back to basics videos to kind of give that terminology knowledge, give that background, so it's a little bit easier to understand as we're really kind of getting into the nitty gritty of breaking down a game. I didn't forget about all of the requests that I still have in for game analysis. I just wanted to break it up a bit. We had done two straight days of that, so try something different for a day, and then we'll get back to that probably tomorrow. Once again, thank you everybody for the support. If you like this, if there's any strategic topics you want us to kind of expand on, uh, let us know, or you can reference the perks below as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's get into the video. Man defense is the oldest and most basic Quidditch defense. In it, three Quaffle players guard three players on the other team, no matter where they go on the pitch. One offensive Quaffle player is left unmarked, and the fourth defensive Quaffle player guards the hoops. This is usually the keeper. In a man defense, you need to have ideas on three different concepts. The first one is what to do in the case of a screen where the player defending the ball can no longer cover them. Does that player try to fight through to get back to coverage, or does the player guarding the screen player, as you see here, step up instead? The second concept is what to do if the point defender is beat and has to go back to their hoops, whose job it is to step up to the ball. And the third one is what to do if the ball goes to the unmarked player, whose job it is to step there. In this defense, you can have your beaters play either vertically or horizontally, though these days it's rare to see a true vertical beater look as we see on this play and there's also variations that use help defense where players guarding players off ball will step into the lane if they see a drive about to happen another variant on the man defense is the high press in which your defense picks up the ball right at midfield with your beaters and chasers the idea of this is with a very confident beater and chaser situation you can force a turnover in this case a double reset by applying consistent pressure and winning the beater battle, getting the ball back quicklier than you could in a more standard man defense. The Caboose was a defense originated by Boom Train last season as a counter to Cav Ball, which has become omnipresent amongst club teams, this kind of flat three chaser option. It's based off of a concept in Ultimate Frisbee, a zone known as the Cup, which is always looking to funnel people in towards the middle of the field and cutting down on their opportunities for bigger plays. As you can see, it often shows up as two Quaffle players stepping to the ball and not allowing them to get out to the wings, though that does happen there. By taking away these options, it makes it harder for a team to simply create a no budget situation and drive as there are always defenders ready. It is a defense slightly more susceptible to attacks onto the wings and behind the hoops, but because these attacks have become less prominent in the meta at the time, was very effective and helped Boom Train make a run all the way to the club semifinals that season. The Baylor zone was the original zone defense in Quidditch. Though it's named after Baylor, it actually got its start with Minnesota Quidditch when they made a deep run at World Cup 5 and was originally called the Three Trees. Baylor took it to prominence, though, and World Cup 6 made the Final Four and kept playing it through the years, eventually earning the Nomer. It is a defense that has three Quaffle players at the hoops, one player playing up, and the beaters in a horizontal positioning when they have bludger control. It is heavily reliant on the beaters to close up the space that the Quaffle players cannot due to them being placed at the hoops. Its, due, its job is to take away all shots, but it does leave spaces on the wings for passes to move. And because of that, it has slowly over time been overtaken by other zone defenses. Still, by being the original and being one of the easiest ones to set up, it is still used at times, including by Baylor to this day. In order to run it, you need to have a complex series of rotations for how and who is going to step out to each pass. And it's said that historically Baylor had entire binders of these rotations. The 1-2-1 zone may look similar to 2-2 zones with its two players at the hoops, but actually shares more in common with the Baylor zone than it does those zones. 
It was originally played by Emerson when they made their Final Four run, and is now most prominently used by the University of Virginia. Like the Baylor Zone, it relies heavily on its beaters to cover a lot of space because it has three players, two at the hoops and one behind the hoops, that are not covering those wings. This is the easiest place to attack it, but if you have beaters who are able to cover those spaces with athleticism, as both UVA and Emerson have had, it can be an effective zone that can make things very difficult for opposing offenses. The true 2-2 zone is rarely seen in America, but is very commonly played in Australia and was used to great effect in 2018 by the Australian national team to neutralize Team USA's offense. In this play, there are two players at the hoops and two players at the top, and they are all guarding space rather than any of them guarding a man. This allows them to close down on driving lanes very effectively, as you're about to see on this play. You also notice that in this zone, it's very common for one of the top two defenders to wear the green headband so that they cannot be beat once they're in their own keeper zone, making it harder for beaters to create opportunities for the offense. The 2-2 hybrid zone, which has become known as Baylito, after begin being called by that by the Lost Boys who played it prominently, is a mixture of a man and zone defense in which your top two players play man against two offensive chasers and your back two players guard the hoops. The idea here is that if you can use your athleticism to take away the team's two best scoring threats, you minimize what the team can do offensively. However, with intricate passing, the zone can often break down as your top two players who are playing man are now behind the play. As we mentioned, the Lost Boys and Maryland have been playing these 2-2 hybrid zones for many years at this point to great success. The Cav Wall is a variation on the 2-2 zone that has become extremely popular in the modern game. Instead of having your two top players and your beaters play a little bit further from the hoops, it tucks the entire defense almost into the space of the keeper zone. By doing this, you're limiting all shot attempts, but also protecting your beaters and protecting a need for rotations from tap beats. In this case, though Cavalry does lose bludger control, they're able to keep enough of a presence to force a bad pass eventually that will lead to a turnover. Cavalry introduced this defense during bracket play of US Quidditch Cup 12, and it was one of the key factors that led them to shutting out Boom Train this game after having lost to them just months earlier and eventually winning the title over Heat. In that title match, he attempted to exploit the zone largely with mid-range shots, but more recently it's become more common to attack it with passes to the wings and behind the hoops. So that'll do it for today's Back to Basics. If you enjoyed this content, please let us know in the comments so that we can do more of these Back to Basics type videos. If there's specific strategies you want to talk about, let us know. You can see below the ways you can go about that. We would love to do more strategy videos. We just want to guide it towards what's going to be work best for our audience and our fan base. Thanks again so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and have a good night.